For tape, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is the 2022 February Zoom meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp in Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Deborah Bales is hosting this meeting with Merrill Miller, director of Lake Hamilton Bible Camp in Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. This CD is 2A. This is Saturday morning, February the 12th, 2022. First speaker is Jean Williams. She is teaching on Enduring Afflictions. Amen. God bless everyone. We welcome you to Lake Hamilton Bible Camp. On behalf of our leaders, Brother Merle, Sister Barbara, and all of the staff, we welcome you this morning. We pray that the Lord will bless and minister to you in a powerful way today. We're going to open up in prayer. And then once we open up in prayer, we thank God for Apostle Kerna, Prophet Jean. There are speakers today. Father, we thank you today. For this time, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to gather. And Father, we just ask now that you have your way today, that you minister to each and every one. We thank you, Father, for this time. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you're doing. We ask today, O oh God, that you move, that you minister, that you have your way, that you minister and touch everyone here today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for freedom and liberty that we have in you. And, Lord God, now we bind every evil work of the enemy in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, that all distractors are bound. We ask, God, that you free up the communication lines this morning in the name of the Lord. And, Lord, we love you and we appreciate you, God. We thank you for all that you've already done and that that you will do. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Welcome, everybody. Glad to see everybody today. Again, Happy New Year to everybody. <laughs> Same to you, Sister King. Yes. And Brother Mara, again, I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to minister the Word of God. I thank you, Patty and Kevin and all of you at Lake Hamilton. It's an honor to be able to serve the Lord and bless you all today. And Sister Deborah as well. But let's pray. Heavenly Father, I bow in worship and praise before you. I cover myself with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ as my protection. I surrender myself completely and unreservedly in every area of my life to you, Lord. I take a stand against all the workings of Satan that would hinder me from teaching your word today. I resist all the endeavors of Satan and his wicked spirits to rob me of the will of God. I take authority over every foul demon spirit that has been assigned to this teaching this morning to be expelled now in Jesus Christ's name. And I ask the Holy Spirit to loose angelic angels to surround us and protect us in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. I'm excited about this teaching. My husband and I, we was in Kentucky, and the Lord gave me this teaching in Kentucky, and he spelled the word out of what I need to teach on. I'm always asking him what to give his people, because who knows his people better than he do? Amen? So the title of my teaching today is Enduring Afflictions. Enduring afflictions and again this came through a dream and since I have been studying this teaching have I had some afflictions and I know many of you out there with all this going on so many attacks so many afflictions but I believe the word of God is going to speak to us today of what is afflictions and what is this all about so afflictions a cause of persisting pain or distress, a mysterious, a mysterious affliction. So when I looked in the Hebrew of afflictions, and it says ra'at, that's R-A, 
O-W-T in Hebrews for afflictions. It means ra'at. That means bad or evil things. Then I looked into some other translation, and it says many troubles, many hardships, and perplexing circumstances, adversities, evils, and ills. The Bible says in Psalms, the 34th chapter, verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. So when all when afflictions come, trust that the Lord will deliver you out of them all. That's what the scripture says. Many of you have been crushed and have had your heart broken. Many afflictions have attacked you, but God says he will rescue you and redeem you today. There is hope even in suffering. There is hope even in suffering. Let's look at the Hebrew word for deliver. It means to snatch away and rescue you. It means to snatch away and rescue you. This is what deliver means. This means that God wants to snatch you away out of your affliction and rescue you today. The Lord will rescue the righteous person from times of afflictions. We know that afflictions are difficult for us to experience, but they may also be hard for us to understand. Many of us don't understand why are we are attacked or why are we going through these trials and these tribulations and so many afflictions. When affliction comes, people sometimes think God does not love them anymore. He left you. That's not true. Others may assume they have done something terribly wrong and God is punishing them for their sins. But this is not usually the case. You may even get mad at God because he didn't heal you. Or maybe a loved one, he has taken too long to come through and rescue you. We know during this time of the pandemic, a lot of loved ones have died and went home to be with the Lord. And a lot of people are angry. Uh, why didn't you save my loved one or raise them up? But we got to trust God through the process of the afflictions and trust that he will snatch you out and he will bring you through and he will deliver you. Afflictions come to us through a wide variety of experience. And they are difficult for most of us to bear. Afflictions may come in the form of pain, sickness, sorrow, disappointment, injury, calamity, unhappiness, or sometimes tragic events. The Bible helps us realize that afflictions are common to all, but all of us will experience affliction in some measure or in some time. But the Bible says in Job, the 14th chapter, verse 1, that's Job, the 14th chapter, verse 1, man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. So all of us was born of a woman, and we know that trouble will come in our lives. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verse 13, that's 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verse 13. There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with this temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So he will make a way of an escape through your trials, through your afflictions, through your temptations, because he is God. He knows how to bring us through. The word temptation means trial. Temptations mean trial. Trials are common to man, but remember that God will also make a way of escape 
to enable you to bear your trials. Now, there's two areas that I want to touch this morning. And the first one is God with us in afflictions. God with us in afflictions. God is with us. He is sovereign and has no limitations. He said in Hebrews, the 13th chapter, verse 5, that's Hebrews, the 13th chapter, verse 5, he will never leave you or forsake us. And we have to believe the word of God. We are living in the times where when we read what, what the word says, we must believe what the word says. Because trials and tribulations and afflictions will come, but we got to trust that God will snatch us out he will save us. He will protect us because he has made it a way of an escape. And that escape is through Jesus Christ. Even though it feels as though he is not there, he is. When we don't get an immediate response or healing, then we begin to get mad at God and angry because he didn't move when you wanted him to. There is a reason why he didn't move. I deliver you at that time. It doesn't mean he's not with you. And during this process, let me say this, during this process where he's silent and you don't hear him, this is the time where you stand still, you press in and hear what the Lord is saying because he wants you to get something out of this afflictions and trials. Yes. There's a purpose. There's a reason. And he wants you to get something out of it. When you begin to display this type of attitude towards God, this allows the enemy to come in and go to work and speak lies about what you are enduring. When you get mad at God, you murmur, you complain, this opens the door to the enemy. So we must stay in a positive attitude that God will deliver. And God will deliver. And all this that we are going through, God is going to deliver us out of this. Everything is in God's timing. The Bible says in John, the 10th chapter, verse 10, the devil come to do three things. And that is to come to steal, kill, and destroy. And this is what the enemy wants to do. He wants to steal, he wants to kill, and he wants to destroy you because he knows that you are a danger to his kingdom. And if he can move you out of the way, then he can go and do what he needs to do. When we trust God abiding presence, we can become the source of great comfort in life difficulties. Let me say that again. When we trust God abiding presence, we can become the source of great comfort in life difficulties. The Bible says in 1 Peter, the 5th chapter, verse 7, that's 1 Peter, the 5th chapter, verse 7, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Casting all your cares, not some, not one, but all of them, because he cares for you. God loves us so much that he sent Jesus into the world to die for our sins and indeed the sins of all of God's people. The Bible says in 1 John, the fourth chapter, verse 10, that's 1 John, the fourth chapter, verse 10, herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to the perpetuation, which means the sacrifice for our sins, because he loved it up so much. Regardless of our afflictions, God love does not change. It doesn't change when we go through afflictions and trials and tribulations. His love stays the same. Circumstances cannot alter his love for you. Circumstances cannot change his mind about you. When we trust God, we not only trust his love, but also his word and his promise. We trust his love that he has for us, and we trust his promises. The Bible says in Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, verse 2. That's Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, verse 2. When thy passest through the waters, 
I will be with thee. And through the rivers, that shall not overflow thee. When thou walk through the fire, that shall not burn. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. So when you're going through the trials and tribulation and afflictions, he will carry you through the waters. He say, I got you. I am there with you through those trials. You are not alone. So trust the process through this. Jesus is saying, I got you, and you must believe that. But you got to trust him and believe God's word. One thing I have learned going through afflictions, the enemy will turn the word around to make you think that God is not with you, for you can believe his lie. And this is where you got to know that you know that you know that Jesus told you his word is true. It's his everlasting and it will stand. And you have to remind the enemy who you are and who Jesus Christ is. Because the time is coming that we're going to have to go through many, many things. But we got to trust God through the process. The Bible says in John, the 11th chapter, verse 4. That's John, the 11th chapter, verse 4. This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified thereby. So every sickness is not unto death. If the Bible says in John 11, chapter verse 4, that every sickness is not unto death, that should be a ringing right there for you. Because this is a purpose that the sickness or afflictions came upon you because God wants to do something in you. Because he said in his word, this is why you got to believe it. He said that every sickness is not unto death, but it is to glorify him. So we need to ask him What are you doing in the midst of my afflictions? What are you doing in the midst of my trials? And God will reveal himself to you, and he will show you what he is about to do. This sickness is to glorify God and goodness in raising you up again as he raised Lazarus. That his glory might be made manifest in your life where he can prove who he is. That's what he wants to do. He wants to be known on the earth as your deliverer, as your provider, as your strength. But you got to trust him through the process. When they thought Lazarus was gone, he knew that he wasn't gone. All he had to do was call it forth. And God wants to call forth those trials and tribulation and affliction that's in your life. And he want to snatch you out of them. And he want to raise you up. And he wants to cause you to form into his character so he can move into your life and builds you into your kingdom. Hallelujah. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verse 9, that 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verse 9, in the New Testament, God said, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Paul then said, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Hallelujah. That is powerful. My grace is sufficient. Then Paul says that he will glorify in his infirmities. That the power of Christ may rest upon him. Because he knew that God has the power so he can rest in him. Because God's grace, Paul gladly endured his afflictions, strengthened by the felt power of Christ. Whether God deliver us from our afflictions or deliver us in our afflictions, as he did Paul, may we find peace and comfort in the knowledge that he is with us. He wants us to find peace and comfort in the knowledge of him, that he's with us. The Bible says in 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, verse 16. That's 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, verse 16. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. So glorify God in your afflictions. So how can you glorify God through afflictions? That's many questions that many ask. By trusting, he will deliver you and believe that he will. 
The Bible says in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verse 1. That's Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verse 1. Now faith is the substance hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So he wants you to have faith in the things that you cannot see, that you have to trust him. That's Hebrews 11, chapter verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You can't see it, but you know he's working behind the scene. But you must trust him and have that now faith, not tomorrow, but now faith and believe and trust God that he will bring you through. The next thing I want to talk about, can afflictions be beneficial? Can afflictions be beneficial? So how can that be? God loves us enough to save us by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We should suspect that he has a beneficial purpose to our afflictions. Jesus was afflicted, suffered. God can take our afflictions and bring about good. He can take those afflictions, those trials, those tribulations and bring about good. Although we may not see all the specific benefits, I understand how good can God be, but he often are. If we can understand the benefits, we will see things differently. If we see our situation differently, we will see things differently. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verse seven, that's 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verse seven. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. Job did not understand the full purpose of his afflictions. But he did realize they made him a better man. The Bible says in Job, the 23rd chapter, verse 10. That's Job, the 23rd chapter, verse 10. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he had tried me, I shall come forth as gold. He knew that he would come forth as gold. That's Job, the 23rd chapter, verse 10. So when gold is melted by fire, impurities come to the surface. It removes all those things that should not be there in order for it to come clean as gold. Even so, afflictions can help us become better purer and more spiritual people. This is why God wants us to go through the process and he wants us to know that he's with us because he's purifying us. He's bringing all those impurities, all those saying that it's not like him to the surface, but he can make you into the image of him and you can go about and be about your father's business and you can leap into your destiny because God has changed you. He has turned you around and those things and those chains that's been holding you down, now you are loose and free from them. So God wants to do a work in you. So when afflictions touches some people, they cause them to re-evaluate life and rediscover those things, excuse me, which are important. (coughs) Afflictions can and often do change our perspective. Therefore, thank God for the afflictions that (coughs) turn us around. Excuse me one minute. (coughs) Amen. The Bible says in Psalms, the 119 chapter, verse 67. That's Psalms, the 119 chapter, verse 67. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. This is what David said. But now I have kept thy word. Psalms 119, verse 67. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now have I kept thy word. David was familiar with trying times and difficult circumstances. Even though God is with us in our afflictions, and oftentimes we must recognize that some afflictions are the working of Satan. So let's not get it twisted, okay? Remember that God allowed him to afflict Job and take from him blessings. God had previously given Job Excuse me, God had previously given him those gifts. Job did not understand, nor can we, but like Job, we can and should trust 
God through the process. The Bible says in Job, the 13th chapter, verse 15. That's Job, the 13th chapter, verse 15. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain my own ways before him. Even though Job thought God was doing this to him, he said, I will maintain my own ways before him. So through all this process, he still want to maintain his ways before him. And we must continue to do that as well. Many, many people make the mistake of praying only during times of great need. But we should pray daily and often whether life is pleasant or difficult. Even when we are afflicted, there are many blessings for which to be thankful for. Paul encouraged us to make thanksgiving a part of every prayer. He said in Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse six, that's Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse six, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. Notice that he admonished us not to worry about anything, but to pray about everything. And that's Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse six. Giving thanks to God, who is the source of every blessing. He is the source to every blessing. So during our afflictions, we can thank God those things are no worse than they are. Because there's always someone worse off than you. But the enemy will want you to think that you are the only one that is enduring this and you are the only one that is going through. But if you listen to those lies, you will believe him. Peter wrote in First Peter, the fourth chapter, verse 16. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. And that's First Peter, the fourth chapter, verse 16. Yet if any man suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Moving right along, and I'm getting into my closing. God often allows believers to suffer so that they can become more like Jesus in their character. In our weaknesses, in our weakest moments, when our anguish and affliction is too much to bear, he's with us. Yes. Jesus meets us in our suffering on a personal level. He meets us in our suffering on a personal level. God is faithful to deliver you today. Jesus welcomed us to bring all of our affliction to his feet. He welcomes them. The Bible says in 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, verse 7, as 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, verse 7, cast every care at his feet. He welcomes those. He wants you to bring them to him. He is the deliverer. So don't be afraid to bring your trials and your tribulation, your afflictions. He welcomed them. He wants you to bring them. The battle is his. It's not yours. It's his. You may say today, Prophetess Jean, this sickness looks permanent to me. And I don't know how I'm going to make it. But I say to you, the size of your problem indicate that your future is bigger than what you can see. I believe the bigger the problem, the bigger your destiny. And you got to believe that. The bigger the challenge, the bigger the promotion. So all the things that you are enduring, there's a purpose, there's a meaning, and it will be known. And it will manifest itself sooner or later if you don't faint now. I believe you will see the faithfulness of God. Why? Because he said it in his word. He's there. He loves you. He's with you. God is going to heal you completely. Those of you that's out there, you've been struggling with, with health issues, so many trials, so many tribulations. 
but you must trust him through the process. Don't get discouraged because you are still in the problem. That problem came with a perspective. That problem came with a perspective. I believe by faith you will begin to come out of this sickness into health. And you will come out of lack into abundance. If God call you to it, he's going to bless you with it. You will get the finances. You will get the, he will cause the people to come from the north, south, east, and west to help you, to dine with you, to get whatever you need. Don't get tired doing the right thing. Don't get tired doing the right thing. Don't let afflictions put you in a place where you give up and you surrender it all and say, I'm tired. I no longer want anymore. I don't know want no I no longer want it anymore. Don't ever get tired of doing right. Keep believing. Keep the faith. That problem is a sign. Promotion is coming. The Bible says in Psalms, the 50th chapter, verse 15. That Psalms, the 50th chapter, verse 15. Trust me in the time of trouble. Call upon me, I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Psalms, the fifth chapter, the 50th chapter, verse 15. Trust me in the time of trouble. Trust him. He wants you to trust him in the time of trouble. Call upon me, he said. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. God is going to rescue you. He will not leave you. That is not how your story will end. Your story will not end in a sad situation. He is about to turn things around. That suddenly is about to show up in your situation. That suddenly is about to show up in your situation. God will restore your health. God will restore your children. God will restore your marriages. When he brings you out, it would be better than you imagine. You must believe your setback is a setup so God can show up. Let me say this again. You must believe your setback is a setup so God can show up in your situation. All things will work together for your good. Sometimes you have trouble. Not because you are doing something wrong, but because you are doing something right. So you must believe that. Because the enemy will make you think, oh, you must be did something wrong, or, or something happened, or, or they put witchcraft on me, or they did this, or they did that. But that's not always the case. You could be doing everything right, and it still comes. But last but not least, and I'm getting ready to bring my husband on. If you can see the sickness on the other side, you will see things differently. Start seeing your situation as God sees it, and you will be able to go through with peace. And I leave that with you today. God bless you. Thank you for allowing me to minister the word of God with you. I hope that you take this, take down these scriptures and you apply them to your situation, knowing that God got you, that he's going to snatch you out of this thing and he's going to bring you out so he can be glorified. To God be the glory. Thank you again. God bless you. Hello, everybody. Hello. First of all, we want to give glory to God and to his precious son. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, and through the precious Holy Spirit. Uh, I, I, I thank the Lord for blessing my wife to minister about affliction. And I think that is very timely, very prophetic, and I think that is much needed even at this time. Uh, I want to thank the Lord also for Director Merrill, uh, the laborers in the Lord, Sister Patty, Kevin, and thank God for Sister Deborah. And thank God for each and every one of you who made a sacrifice and took time to come out. Um, it's just been a, a blessing to, to see that the sacrifice that many people make to hear the word of the Lord. You know, I wish we could fill up churches like they fill up the football stadiums. I wish we could fill up churches like they're getting ready to fill up for the Super Bowl this weekend. I wish churches would, could fill up with the thousands just like that. Amen. All right. Let's get started. 
In Job chapter 22, verse 28, that's Job chapter 22, verse 28, the Bible says, Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established. Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be be established. Uh, We want to decree some declarations before we get into our message. I shall not die before my time. In the mighty name of Jesus, I decree and declare that I shall not die before my time. But I shall live long and declare the works of the Lord according to the fullness of my time in Christ Jesus, my Lord. I decree and declare that I will not die of any spirit of premature death hovering around me, my family, my wife, husband, children, church members, and all those associated directly and indirectly indirectly to me. I decree and declare that not even the jab or the coronavirus will lead to sickness in my body or cause me to go to the grave. I decree and and declare that any hidden sickness in my bones, my bone marrow, my veins, my systems, and my blood be washed away in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and declare that the DNA of Jesus' blood runs through my veins. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, I sense that. Mm. Mm -hmm. I decree and declare scriptures in the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 5, that by his stripes we are healed, and so do I declare my total healing today in the name of Jesus. I I decree and declare that I cover myself and my family with the blood of Jesus, the blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. I decree and declare I am who God says I am in the name of Jesus. I shall accomplish my destiny before I die. I shall be like David in Acts chapter 13. I shall, I shall, David did not die until he had fulfilled his purpose. I decree and declare that I'm a purpose man, or you could say a purpose woman, that I have a ministry to fulfill. And devil, you're not going to take me prematurely in Jesus Christ's name. Now, if you can hear me, just give Jesus Christ a praise right now. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's acknowledge Jesus Christ before we get started. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, that's the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. It says, look into Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Father, we acknowledge your son, Jesus, before we even go forth in this message. Jesus is the author, and he is the finisher of our faith, and we acknowledge him before we go any further. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. I want to use as a subject the month of the Hebrew month of Adar. Adar is A-D-A-R. The Hebrew month of Adar is what I want to use as a subject. I want you to turn with me to the book of Revelation, chapter 7. The book of Revelation, chapter 7. Let's look at verses 4 and 8. That's the book of Revelation, chapter 7. Let's look at verses 4 and 8. In verse 4, the Bible says, And then I heard how many were sealed, I'm reading out of the Amplified Bible, marked out of every tribe of the sons of Israel, there were 144,000. Verse 5 says, 12,000 were sealed, marked out of the tribe of Judah, 12,000 of the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 of the tribe of Gad. Look look at verse 6. 12,000 of the tribe of Asher, 12,000 of the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 of the tribe of Manasseh. Look at verse 7. 12,000 of the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 of the tribe of Levi, 12,000 of the tribe of Issachar, and let's look at verse 8. 12,000 of the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 of the tribe of Joseph, 
and 12,000 of the tribe of Benjamin. Now, I'm leading you somewhere. Turn to the book of St. Matthew, chapter 10. Let's look at verse 30. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 10, verse 30. The Bible says that the very hairs on your head are numbered. Once again, the Bible says the very hairs of your head are numbered. The word numbered in the Greek is arithmio, which means the very hairs on your, of your head are counted and numbered by God. When you look at numbers, there is a prophetic significance with the meaning of numbers. Our God is communicating prophetically to us with the use of numbers. And there are times when God communicates to us with prophetic numbers. Some of you are waking up at night seeing certain numbers on your clock. And the Holy Spirit is quickening your spirit man to pay attention but you keep going to the restroom or the bathroom. Some of you are having dreams and visions of prophetic numbers. And you're not paying attention to them because God is speaking through numbers. Some of you are having encounters with numbers on the highway with ad- advertisement. Or the Holy Spirit is quick quickening you about a certain number so you can align it with Holy Scripture. Now, when I say numbers, I don't mean lottery numbers or mega million numbers or scratch off numbers. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about having an in prophetic encounter with God's voice through numbers. Let me say that again. I'm talking about having a prophetic encounter uh, with God's voice through numbers. Turn with me to the book of Psalms, chapter 19. Let's look at verses 1 and 4. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 1 through 4 of the Amplified Bible. The Bible says in verse 1, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows and proclaims his handiwork. Look at verse 2. Day after day, Pause for speech. Day after day, pause for speech. Now that word speech in Hebrew is ember, which means day after day releases an utterance. Day after day releases a speech. Day after day releases a word. Day after day releases a promise, a command, or day after day releases a number. And night after night shows forth knowledge. Now look at verse 3. There is no speech, no spoken word from the stars. Their voice is not heard. Look at verse 4 closely. Yet their voice is evident, goes out throughout all the earth. Their sayings to the end of the world of the heavens have God made a tent for the sun. We see that Jehovah's voice can be communicated through numbers. The quickening of the, ask the Lord prayerfully. What are you saying through the quickening of numbers in my spirit? I've gotten to the point now, when I, if I'm awakened at night and I look at the clock and there's a number, I ask the Lord prayerfully sometimes, and I should be doing it all the time, God, what are you saying to me through numbers? What are you saying to me through the Holy Bible? What are you saying to me through the Holy Writ? What are you speaking to me about numbers? So I wanted to share that with you prophetically. You are in a prophetic time where God does speak through numbers. Now, on the Hebrew calendar, we are in 5782 on the Hebrew calendar year. Now, we're on 2022 on the Gregorian calendar, which is the pagan calendar. Now, 5782, 2022. Hidden things will be made manifest. Let me say that again. Hidden things will be made manifest. Hidden areas where Yeshua is not Lord, you will see begin to be made manifest. Mm -hmm. And here's some of the places that you're going to see see the manifestation. In the White House, in the church, in the family. Even you, as a believer, hidden demons or devils that you have not been delivered from 
will be made manifest. This is the end of Part A. Please play Part B. Thank you. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home.